Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chapter 10 in my 12-part course on video production for small business owners and nonprofits. Today, I'm going to teach you how to color correct in Final Cut Pro. You are watching the free version of this course that I've made available on YouTube, but if you would like to take the full course, be sure to head over to the website you see on your screen, or you can find a link in the video description. Without any further ado, let's begin the class. Hello everyone, today I'm going to teach you how to perform a basic color correction in Final Cut Pro. Of all of the different chapters that I have created for this course, this has by far been one of the most difficult topics to cover. What you have to understand about color correction is it truly is a science. That's why there are people who are full-time colorists. So what I'm going to do is teach you how to use the most important tools that will help you achieve a more professional and polished look. Lesson one, no matter what you do, your video is going to look slightly different on every screen. It's a little bit like when you walk into a big box store and they have that giant wall of TVs. When they're next to each other, of course you can see the difference between the different brands. But when you're at home, you only have one screen in front of you. I'd also like to remind you that the Mac, iPhone, and iPad now have features like True Tone and Night Shift, which will automatically shift the white balance on your screen depending on the time of the day. So what I'm basically saying here is no matter what you do, your video is not going to look perfect on every single device. The main goals of color correction are we want to make sure that your skin tones are accurate, we want to make sure that the colors appear as they are meant to be, meaning we want red to appear as red, blue to appear as blue, and green to appear as green, and finally we want to make sure that everything is properly exposed so that there's nothing that's either blown out or underexposed. There are a few settings that I recommend you change anytime you're color correcting. Let's go to the Apple icon at the top left and let's go into System Preferences. From here, I want you to click on Displays and make sure that Night Shift and True Tone are both turned off. Then let's go into the Color tab and uncheck the option where it says Show Profiles for this display only. If you used your iPhone to shoot your video, that most likely uses a profile called Rec 709. As you can see, it's here in this menu. The name is a little bit longer, but what I would recommend that you do is set it to that when you're color correcting. Again, this is provided that you shot your video with your iPhone. There is one more setting that I recommend that you change, but that is back in Final Cut Pro. So let's go back into that app and click on where it says Final Cut Pro here at the top left and go into Preferences. From here, click on the General tab where it says Color Correction, and I recommend that you change it from Color Board to Color Wheels. For those of you who are taking my course on Think Epic, you should see a video associated with this chapter that you can download. I would like you to do that at this time and please bring it into a new project. Let's now rearrange our windows a bit. I would like you to close the browser window by clicking here at the top right. Then in the preview window, I would like you to click on where it says view and select video scopes. Or if you wanna use the shortcut, it's command seven. To the left of our preview window, I would like you to click on where it says View, and I'd like you to drag this slider where you see this sun icon all the way to the right. Above, I'd like you to select the box that only has one square. That just means that we're only going to work with one tool at a time. You can always change this later on, but for this point in time, I would like you to just use one. Below the View menu, I'd like you to click on this icon, and in this list, I'd like you to set this first option to Waveform, then click back into this menu, and let's view the Luma channel. Great, we've got our windows set up, so let's begin the process. The thing I always like to start with is setting the white balance. Ideally, when you shoot a video, you want to start by having someone on camera hold up a white piece of paper. You can also use a gray card, it doesn't really matter. This is used partially to set the white balance, but it's also really handy when it comes to setting the levels for the shadows, midtones, and highlights. That being said, if you are working with footage that you already shot and you didn't think to do that ahead of time, don't worry, you can make adjustments after the fact, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in just a moment. I'm gonna start by showing you how to white balance using the white piece of paper. Think of it, students, what I would like you to do is click on this clip so that it's highlighted, then click on this magic wand icon and select balance color. Now, let's go into the inspector, and here in the video inspector, I am gonna change this from automatic to white balance. If I move my cursor over the preview window, it has now turned into a droplet icon. 
So now I'm gonna place my cursor on that white piece of paper and I'm gonna click down and drag out just a little bit so that it can sample as much of that piece of paper as possible. And as you can see here, our colors have shifted and my skin tones look a lot better than they did a second ago. If you want to see the before and after, you can just uncheck this box. If you are working with footage that you already shot, here's another method. Click over to this triangle icon in the inspector and here below the color wheels, you will find a slider where you can manually adjust the white balance. And just to be clear, when you change the temperature in doing so, you are also changing the white balance. They are the same thing. You're either warming things up or you're cooling them down until theoretically they are balanced. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that you might not always want that look. You might sometimes want your shot to look warmer or cooler. So just please know there is no wrong way to do it. Ultimately, it is your product. Thank you so much for watching everyone. We will be right back. It is a little known fact that the human eye can much more easily correct for exposure when you remove all color. So when I'm color correcting a shot, the first thing that I like to do is make it look perfect in black and white. The easiest way that you can do that is to go here into the global color wheel, and then you can drag this left arrow down. That will remove the global saturation levels. And when you take it away, all you're left with is a black and white image. So now that our shot is desaturated, I would like to bring your attention to the Luma channel. When it comes to the highlights, 100% is considered to be a light source. And because my piece of paper isn't producing light, it's just reflecting light, we probably want that to read right around 90%. To adjust the levels, we can use the highlights slider here on the right hand side. When it comes to the shadows, you want to make sure that those levels never drop down below zero. That slider you'll find right here. So for example, I'm going to adjust the slider so that my levels get really close to zero without actually hitting zero. When it comes to setting your midtone levels, my advice is that you just simply play with it. You know, sometimes you just have to export a copy and then see how it looks on a bunch of different devices before you find that happy level. You should also know that the iPad Pro is actually one of the best calibrated monitors out there. So if you're trying to get an accurate feel for how the colors look, you can always hook up your iPad to your Mac thanks to the sidecar feature, which by the way, you can find in system preferences. And that way you can get a much more accurate idea of how everything looks. In earlier chapters, I recommended that you consider not shooting in HDR only because it does add an extra step in editing. If you did shoot any of your shots in HDR, please note all you need to do is go here into the effects panel, go into color, and you will find the HDR tool right here. So all you have to do is drag and drop that onto your shot. And finally, the last thing you'll need to change is here in the inspector, we're gonna need to change it from HDR to HLG. And when I make that switch, our shot now looks correct. I would now like to show you a few different ways that you can enhance the colors in your video. There are several techniques that you can utilize to tackle this, but what I want to do is show you how to use the most important tools. For this example, I'm going to use the quick clip of the sign that says entering Turo. If I play this clip full screen, you can see it looks totally washed out. The sky doesn't look that blue, the greens don't look that green. Mm-hmm. Perfect for color correcting. One of the techniques that I encourage you to use when you're color correcting is to initially overcorrect and then dial it back. I'm gonna start by adjusting the exposure. And what I forgot to say a moment ago is you actually probably wanna start with the shadows first, then do the highlights and finally deal with the midtones. This shot was taken right in the middle of the day. So most of what we see here is going to fall into the highlights and the midtones. So watch as I now grab the slider for the saturation levels in the shadows and drag it dramatically up and down. See how it's changing the color? So what I wanna do is initially overcorrect and then dial it back. Then we'll move on to the highlights and we'll do the same thing. We'll initially overcorrect and then dial it back. And finally, let's go into the midtones and do the same thing. Here's another trick. Take a look at this shot of this line of candy bars. 
See this first bar? That is actually supposed to be purple. But as you can see here, it looks pretty washed out. To remedy this problem, I'm going to add a hue slash saturation curve. The most important tool in this list is where it says hue versus saturation. So watch this. I'm going to click on the eyedropper and I'm going to select the shade of purple that's in our shot. Now to enhance it, I'm going to drag up on this point and see how now the color stands out? Looks great. If you look at the center of each of these wheels, you will see a dot. If we grab that dot and drag it, it's going to start to add a tint to that part of the image. In the case of this shot, it looks like we still have this very subtle yellow tint to it. So yellow's complementary color is purple. So let's now correct it and add a ton of purple and then dial it back until we find the right balance. It's basically fishing, but with color. Thanks for watching everyone. We will be right back. Another important tool that I want to show you how to use is the color match tool. This allows you to sample the color from one shot and then paste it onto another. Let's use these two shots as an example. To make this second shot match the first shot, I'm going to select the magic wand icon and choose color match. Now I can see a second window and all I need to do is click on the part of the clip that I want to sample and then click apply. Now that we've gone over the basics of color correction, I have one more technique that I would like to teach you, and that is how to copy and paste corrections from one shot onto another. This is very similar to copy and paste with a slight twist. Let's say I want to take all of the corrections that I made on this shot and paste them onto the following shot. To do that, all I need to do is copy the first clip by highlighting it and then pressing Command C on my keyboard. Then I'll select the second shot, and this time I'm going to press Command, Shift, and the letter V. So it's just like paste. All you need to do is add the Shift key. And when I do, you can see all the corrections that I had on my first shot. And if there are any that I would like to exclude, I can uncheck them from this list. So now I have all of those corrections from the first shot now applied to the second shot. And just be aware, you can also do this to more than one shot. So for example, if you are filming in a controlled environment, sort of like when I'm filming these videos, you can do all of your color corrections to one shot and then copy and paste them to all the rest. In chapter 11, I'm going to teach you the best settings when it comes to exporting your video from Final Cut Pro. After that, we only have one chapter left, and that is where I'm going to teach you how to make your commercial appear as a targeted ad on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Class dismissed.